And in an effort to tackle the hunger issue in Malaysia, a non-governmental organization called the Lost Food Project is dedicated to achieving a sustainable future and ending hunger by rescuing lost food or surplus food and finding them a new home to those in need. That is great to hear, mm -hmm. obviously. So let's discuss this further and invite the Lost Food Project General Manager, Maud Siazwan. Good morning. Uh, and th thank you for joining us this morning and happy 65th Independence Day. Thank you for hi. taking the time out of this national holiday <laughs> to chat with us this morning. Hi, hi. Thank you very much. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's such a pleasure to, to be here today and you know such a momentous day for Malaysia as well so I think this is a good start to the day. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so tell us more about your organization we've kind of just touched on it a little bit can you tell us a little bit more about it? All right so the Lost Food Project we are basically an NGO as you mentioned a uh, non-governmental organization um, generally we are termed as a food bank but mm. we, we like to think that we're a bit more than just a food bank because mm -hmm. what we do is we rescue food especially surplus food um, from you know the likes of manufacturers, suppliers, supermarkets, distributors, and so on and so forth. And then what we do with those food that we rescue is that we distribute them to um, com you know, the underprivileged communities, to charities and NGOs that already do good work on the ground. You know, residents association, at, um, especially in what we term as B40 community locations in Malaysia, meaning those who are below certain. Um, income threshold that we consider as you know the bottom 40 so we distribute that to to you know locations in Klang Valley you know Selangor Kuala Lumpur uh, also mm. some parts of Johor Bahru and so on so um, the way we do this is we you know we use a lot of volunteers for that operation mm. we also have um, you know some staff members and so on so it is a collaborative effort not just you know, among our community and our you know, volunteers but also with Charities and NGOs out there with you know B40 uh, residents association, for example, parliamentarians, local government, local councils, and so on and so forth. So it is a collective effort. I see. So um, Shazwan, can you uh, please explain to us the process um, of the distribution? All right. So um, as you can see, the the as, you know the video that was shown earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there are th basically how we set up is that we set up three different units for the Lawsuit Project okay. to operate. Um, first, we have a dedicated team at this wholesale market in Kuala Lumpur, Pasaburung, uh, Kuala Lumpur, we call them. Um, and it, this is a very large, uh, you know, wholesale market that that, you know, that sells vegetables, fish, meat, uh, fruits, and so on and so forth. But we concentrate mainly on the vegetables. And the vegetables that you see in this video are the ones that we collect from this Pasaburung, from this wholesale market. Um, so that's one dedicated team, you know, on a daily basis and we collect on a daily basis we can collect between 1.5 to 2 tons a day just surplus food meaning that food that the vendors were not able to sell on the day mm. um, the second unit that we have is the wholesale and bulk theme uh, this goes through our warehouse so we have uh, a few drivers and we have trucks that collect from mm. you know, manufacturers we're talking about brands such as Nestle and Danone and and you know even supermarket and so on and so forth so these are the bulk item that goes beyond um, 500 kilos or one ton um, even up to uh, you know we've received pallets in 20 to 30 pallets in a single collection so these are the ones that we collect and goes to our warehouse goes through directly to our partners it, it is a very much a networking kind of um, operation and then the third unit is our food rescue team so these are mainly volunteers we collect, uh, you know, from bakeries, from supermarkets, anything below 100 kilos or 50 kilos, our volunteers will go and collect. So it is almost like how Uber works, you know, mm. where we, if we have a bakery partner in Kotaling Jaya, one of our locations in Selangor, for example, then we have a volunteer from Kotaling Jaya that collects from that particular bakery and then distribute to a community or a charity within proximity of about 10 kilometers around the area. So. Um, that one is a bit more kind of uh, volunteer driven, meaning that it is uh, the volunteers that do collect and, and distribute mm. the food. So these three units work uh, in tandem and, and you know, on a daily basis, uh, you know, on average, for example, we've been collecting around 3.5 to 4 tons um, wow. of food uh, per year, especially in 2021. Wow, that is uh, already making yeah. a huge difference a with those numbers. Quantity. By the way, um, are there any, uh, do you have to provide any incentives as well? to those that you're collecting the surplus food from, for example, supermarkets and uh, uh, wherever else yeah. that you collect this food, do you, do you, do you have to provide incentives or is it, are they doing this voluntarily? They are doing this voluntarily. They give, mm. us, give us a food on, on a routine donations basis. I think it's more of the 
um, you know the cost for, for to save food uh, you know there, there are two basically main causes that we were involved in sustainability you know environmental sustainability because the more you save from going to landfill for example mm-hmm. and landfill contributes a lot to the pollution and, and yeah. the environmental um, you know whatever we're experiencing now for example mm-hmm. with, with the pandemic you know it is more or less because of all the environmental um, haphazard that we've been we've been dealing with over the past few decades right uh, and so that is part of the, the the driver for a lot of the don- donors that, that mm-hmm. contributes the food to us. And you know, they want to work with us because they feel that they can do more for the environment. And instead of throwing things away, might as well this be given to those who I need. And the second, um, I guess, mission, you know, with them collaborating with us is that they can then also help in a humanitarian cause, giving to those who are in need who right. do not necessarily have access to this food. So these are the two main drivers, I would say, and, and you know, we share the, those values, and this, it is mm. a shared value collaboration with a lot, a lot of our partners. I'm, I'm curious, um, one of the challenges, like, uh, let's just talk uh, vegetables and fruit, because they have a, they have kind of an expiry yeah. date as well. Um, what are some of the challenges, and how do you deal with the challenge of, let's say, I'm a supermarket, and I know I've got to get, I've got the surplus, it's going to go bad soon, mm-hmm. um, and that's the time yeah. where I, I'll, I'll call you guys to pick it up. Um, but you have a do you do have a time constraint in order for you to be able to distribute this food while it's still good and edible in order for those in need. How do you deal with those kind of challenges? It it is you know we have standards and procedures. We have food policy guidelines that we, we adhere to that we have developed over uh, the past few years and we okay. continue to kind of improve that. Of course, um, with perishable items such as vegetable, it goes you know bad really fast. You mm-hmm. know we can collect from Pasaburo from the wholesale market today about three and then it goes bad um, by I don't know the next morning right wow, really? so what we need to do is ensure that the network is strong enough meaning that mm-hmm. moment we are able to collect let's say today we collect 1.5 tons you know we, we are able to instantly distribute to the communities and we work with communities who are you know who sign partnership agreement with us and being able to distribute to you know between 100 people to 10,000 people on a, in a single session wow. so this allows us to move things very quickly and, yeah. and we have this with many b communities with many charities and NGOs you know other food banks and other um, you know, soup kitchens for example they, they then cook the, the vegetables that we give them and so on so the the mode of our operation is basically to ensure that things move really fast so the more food that comes in the more network that we need in order to right. distribute faster so that's that's always been i guess the the um, the way that we can not only improve our efficiency but also um, uh, you know, expand our operation as well yeah that's mm. a there's a lot of i guess to make it all work there's a lot of wheels turning all yeah. at once right all at once and exactly, everything exactly. to juggle now um shazwan i also want to know um, about your vision because you um have said it before eliminating hunger in malaysia can you tell us more about this yeah. I would say I mean, that is a very lofty vision. If anything, um, I don't think um, you know we can we can uh, at least in my mind that we cannot uh, achieve that during my lifetime. But it, it is the effort that counts. It is getting more people involved, and we want to not just eliminate hunger, but also you know rescue the environment and we mm. know, make, make sure that everything is sustainable. Yeah, we want important. food to go to people who are in need. We talk about global um, food insecurity and food shortage and so on. You know, we continue to produce food, but what do you know? One third of all food produced end up um, not, you know, reaching our dinner table or our lunch, you know, mm-hmm. table and so on and so forth. One third of all food produced goes to waste, and that's where I think the solution is right in front of us. Meaning that the yeah. less that we throw away food, the more people who are hungry get access to this food. You know, around the world before the pandemic, we're talking about 820 million people. Uh, that are hungry or, or facing malnutrition issues and that issue is also uh, mirrored here in Malaysia. Last year, for example, uh, the report was that there were uh, the number of people who are you know, uh, absolute poor increased by about 230%. So, mm-hmm. And we experienced that in, in you know, the, the last food project we, because we, try, we tend to give food daily on a daily basis and the number of people who are in need and the people who are requesting for food, um, we felt that just you know the number increased over the past year because of the pandemic i suppose uh, so we want to ensure that you know at the same time the number of food that goes to waste and you uh, you know you hit the nail uh, on the head clearly early when you said that about four thousand tons of food goes to waste on a daily basis and we are only capable of um, saving about four tons of that you know? mm-hmm. so there's a lot more food out there that goes to waste that we need to rescue that we need to give to people who are in need 
um, to ensure that the gap and the disconnect between the those who are poor and who have not access to this food and you know, the food that goes to waste are, are breached and ensure that it closes. So our vision is that you know to eliminate hunger but we are very realistic in how mm. we, in terms of how we do it we just need more people to be involved yeah, that's it. yeah I, I i think a lot of times when we see statistics like you know a uh, one third of all uh, pr- food that's produced gets thrown away mm. we think oh we're producing too much food no that's not really the case it's just <laughs> not getting to the right people yes. because there's a lot right. more people yes. out there that do need it now even though you're a, a non-governmental organization or ngo do you does the lost food project actually partner or 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 work or collaborate with government offices because we do know the government has plenty of resources and yeah. networks that well that could come in handy into your cause yes um one of you know, one of the the approach that we have is we work with everyone you know we are yeah. we may be a non government organization but you want to work with people who are um, true to the cause so one of it is of course the government and we are part of the strategic partners of the Indonesian government uh, under the national food bank program so that's where we i think we in india we we share resources we've shared uh, assets before with them you know they, they give us truck uh, that we can uh, use uh, at any point of time that we need. We also have partners within that strategic partnership that has, you know, um, other assets such as warehouse, for example, or networks in other locations in other areas because we are primarily in Klang Valley, which is called Kuala Lumpur and Selangor, but, you know, we also have distributed in other locations such as in Perak and Kelantan and other areas mm. where we need that sort of network partnership that goes through, for example, the government as well. So, and we are constantly in contact with them, you know, um, whether it's about discussing policy issues or discussing ways that we can work together. Uh, so, yeah, definitely we, we work with the government, um, but primarily we work more with, for example, NGOs and other charities mm-hmm. that are doing good work on the ground. I see. Now, um, Ajazwan, as a non-profit organization, how do you um, effectively utilize your funding from donations um, to sustain your food rescue program? It, it's, it's a very challenging issue in the end because, you know, we do rely totally on donations uh, for members mm-hmm. of the public and corporate and so on. So we do not purchase our food, you know, the food uh, given to us on donations, mm. so a lot of the funding is utilized to, to support our operations, to ensure that the, our trucks keep on running, to ensure that our warehouse constantly stock, to ensure that our manpower is, is well uh, remunerated for the thing that they do. Because we, you know, I, I got to say, for example, with our drivers and our warehouse managers and, and other people who are working behind the scene, they never stopped even during the pandemic when everything was closed, when you know, there's restricted movements and so on and so forth, we never stopped working. Um, you know, they never stop working and, um, you know, this of course requires some form of remuneration as well. So a lot of it is manpower, a lot of it is warehousing and, uh, you know, ensure that our logistics keeps on moving and keeps on working and so on. So a lot of the um, the, the funding is utilized that way, but it is a very efficient way of working. For example, um, every ringgit spent, on every ringgit donated to the Lost Project equals about five meals uh, distributed to the members of the uh, community that we help. So. It is a very efficient way because, you know, um, last year, for example, or this year, for example, we've collected over um, 800,000 kilogram of food, distributing wow. over 2.5 million meals and okay. doing it in a very cost efficient manner where, you know, it just covers manpower and trucks and so on and so forth. So if, for example, we were to purchase food, uh, mm-hmm. the value of the food that we collected last year, for example, goes up to about 15 to 16 million ringgit mm-hmm. in terms wow. of the value of the uh, Itself. So right. uh, yeah, it's it's not even one fifteenth of the cost of the operations. Yeah, and it's a it's a two way street. I mean, it's not that you're just providing food, but it's all the excess that you're saving from going to those landfills. Now, uh, speaking of funding and donations, right. if you guys go to the lostfoodproject.org. Uh, What's on the homepage right there are three ways that you can help. Uh, You can uh, donate, you can help with any of the fundraising causes there, the tab in the middle, and as well as volunteering, which I'm sure that you, uh, the Lost Food Project, uh, definitely need is volunteers. But as well, there are numbers of the impact. Um, I scrolled through this and it's amazing. Over 2.7 kilograms, a million kilograms of food that's been rescued, over 8.7 million meals provided, and, uh, and as well as the impact from the environment, the uh, right. kilograms of greenhouse uh, gas uh, emissions that have been prevented as well, uh, mm-hmm. on the uh, high 6.7 million mark. So, uh, you know, if you guys want to yeah. know more, there's a Facebook group, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Um, I guess we, before we end the conversation, I'd like to ask, what, what are your long-term goals? Obviously, you've mentioned that, you know, 
ending hunger would be ideal. Mm. Um, but obviously, that is uh, you know that is something that that may be out of reach for any of us in any country. Yeah. That would be a difficult goal to reach. So, what are your long-term realistic goals? I guess that would be a more realistic question for you. I guess in terms of uh, just being realistic, of course, we want to expand. Uh, right now, we are okay. in a few locations here in Malaysia. We want to expand throughout the whole country. Uh, being able to help more people, set up more base, getting more networks in, and getting more food partners to 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 you know help with cost. It's not just about uh, giving out to the people, but also more industry players to be involved in in rescuing, you know, in giving their food, you know, in over, avoiding waste and so on. Yeah. And of course, we want to grow regionally as well. I think we are on the cusp of creating something um, truly amazing with the lawsuit project. You know, being able to do this innovatively. I've not left uh, for example my house over the past two to three years but we've expanded um, in, in so many locations so many areas even Sabah and Sarawak we've provided over 300 families there um, by sit, just sitting in, in you know where I am here in Kuala Lumpur so I think there is an ability to expand without necessarily expanding uh, you know um, base without necessarily spending more money uh, mm -hmm. in order to expand just by doing a lot more networking working with a lot more people and and sharing a lot more resources and, and knowledge about how to do food rescue and distribute food and so on oh. so being able to do that i think um might even go to other southeast asian nation and, and so on so i think that would be the ultimate goal uh, for us there stay safe happy independence happy day, independence day. <laughs> enjoy your uh, day off or i don't know if you even take days off right. you, i'm sure you work all the time but enjoy it <laughs> enjoy it regardless thank you for joining us today thank all right. you thank you thank you very much for having me